I believe we can get started. I want to welcome everybody to the January 11th Operations and Engineering Building Project Neighborhood Meeting. Uh, I'm going to introduce our panelists. I also want everyone to know that this meeting is being recorded for replay. So, um, you know, if you don't want to be on camera, make sure you turn your cameras off. But uh, let's, uh, let's get into the, uh, the good stuff, introducing the panelists that you'll hear from tonight. Uh, first up is General Manager Roland Williams. Roland Williams uh, is the GM for CV San. He's responsible for providing oversight to all activities of the Sanitary District. He's been the General Manager since 2002. Prior to his appointment as General Manager, Roland was a Collection System Manager for CV San for seven years. You'll also be hearing from Associate Engineer Landon Lockery. Landon has been with the Engineering Department since 2010. He's responsible for overseeing the Engineering Department, which handles the day-to-day -day engineering responsibilities, including lateral repair permits, plan reviews, and the pre-treatment program. The Engineering Department is also responsible for evaluating and executing the CV San Sanitary Sewer Collection System Capital Improvements Program. We'll be hearing from Engineering Technician Evan Choi. Evan is an engineering technician. He's been with CV San since 2018. In addition to handling day-to-day -day engineering responsibilities, Evan is a key point of contact for the new operations and engineering building project and helps manage project coordination. Just some uh, words on meeting participation. Please keep your questions to the topic of the operations and engineering building. If you have questions about other CV San topics, you can email me, michael at cvsan.org, so we can follow up with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if you're participating in this meeting, use a computer. Please post your questions in the meeting chat. The meeting uh, moderator, that's me, will read your question to the panelists. If you're participating in this meeting by telephone and have a question, please do the following. Dial star nine to raise your hand. Uh, I will tell you when it's your turn to ask a question. Star six to unmute yourself. Uh, when you're unmuted, ask your question, and then you'll be remuted. Um, since we have only a few people um, at this meeting tonight, uh, when it gets to the Q&A section, I will just uh, call on you. So we're clear on that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Roland Williams. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you for that um, um, introduction. Uh, just wanted to welcome everybody to our um, uh, next edition of our public outreach meetings. We've been doing these for quite a while. Uh, the staff that's here on the call, Landon, myself, and Evan, uh, have been working um, pretty much feverishly on this project and continuously with the with the architect, with uh, all of the, the uh, players involved in trying to bring this design forward till we can get to the point where we can get a permit, uh, uh, go out to bid, get a contractor and get this project underway. As part of that process, we wanna make sure that we continue to have public input and uh, this is part of that process. So we really appreciate those that are taking time out of their busy lives um, and, and show interest in the project. And um, that's why we're here tonight um, to continue to uh, with the public and to um, uh, uh, continue that dialogue. Great, thanks, Roland. Uh, for those of you that um, are new to the project, maybe you just uh, just heard about it. We're going to uh, play a, a quick project video um, so you can get up to speed. So uh, get some popcorn out and in, uh, enjoy the show. So the consolidated operations project has really been about a decade in the making. Currently, we basically have three sites that we use for storage, for operation, for engineering, for permitting, and that's just woefully inefficient. The vision is to really bring all of the efforts that CV San has been doing for the last 82 years under one roof. This sets the next 80 years of operation for CV San in this community. If you look back in the history of Castro Valley, it was primarily ranches and farms, and these early residents realized the importance of proper sanitation. So in 1939, they formed the Castro Valley Sanitary District, and it served Castro Valley for the last 80 plus years. Now, when CB San was first founded, it served about 5,000 people, about 45 miles of pipe. We've grown a lot since then, right? Today, over 75,000 residents, 500 businesses, 160 miles of pipeline, eight pump stations, all leading to the wastewater treatment plant. This new building, really just represents a continuation of that vision that those farmers had way back then. This project is being financed out of reserves. And a lot of people ask us how we're able to do that. Well, CV San is, as I stated earlier, has been planning for this project for over a decade. And we think that's gonna be a huge benefit to the community because they won't have to carry a debt for decades to come. 
the cost of construction escalates every year. And when you're talking about a multi-million dollar project, even the, the smallest increment of increase adds cost to the ratepayer. One of the drivers for this project is security. People might be surprised to, to learn that CV Sand has more than 15 vehicles in its fleet. The total value of our fleet is approximately a million and a half dollars, with some of those individual vehicles costing as much as $500,000. To have those vehicles be stored outside reduces life expectancy and also makes them prone to theft. CV SAM provides wastewater and solid waste service to the community of Castro Valley. Those services are highly regulated by both state and federal regulations. As such, over the last 20 years, CV SAM staff has doubled to be able to accommodate all of the regulations as they come forward. This new building will be able to accommodate all of our staff at one location with room for growth as new emerging regulations come forth. We believe now is the right time to build this building because as I discussed earlier, we do not have enough space for our staff and quite frankly for the fleet that we currently run out of this location. So we do need a site that's larger now. The new building is going to visually enhance that corner of Center Street and Castro Valley Boulevard tremendously. I mean, if you've ever driven by there, there's barren land, there's that old house that's, I think, built in the 1930s, and there's a bunch of old buildings that honestly look pretty bad. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build a new state-of-the-art building. It's going to look uh, cutting edge. It's going to have a nice demonstration garden out on the front of that corner where people that walk by can look at the landscaping, look at the plants there. It's going to be a building that Castro Valley is really proud of. The building will have large meeting rooms, a, a brand new state-of-the-art boardroom. Uh, it will be approximately 20,000 square feet with uh, large vehicle bays, which will be able to store our large maintenance vehicles securely and safely out of the elements. And if you are familiar with our existing site at Marshall Street, you would know that the vehicles are all in sight and out in the elements. And our new facility at Center Street will allow us to bring the vehicles uh, further back off the street, as well as store some of the vehicles inside. One of the key things about this project is we want to be good neighbors. We held public meetings in the past and what we heard from the neighbors around us is concerns about noise about our operations. So we're going to build an eight-foot sound wall on the north, west, and south side to really mitigate those sounds coming from our operations. The building will be LEED certified and we will be utilizing uh, as much natural light to reduce the electrical use during the day while staff are in the office is working. And we will be installing electric uh, vehicle charging stations and both for potential public use as well as staff use as CB SAN looks to expand our fleet into the electrical vehicle market in the future. When we finish construction at the site, it's going to be a, a great achievement for CV Sand. We'll be able to bring everyone together under one roof, working closely together, improve communication, just create a, a much better work environment for CV Sand, our staff, and allow us to provide even better services to the residents and ratepayers. Yeah, first day in the building, um, I'm going to feel a sense of accomplishment and relief. The district bought this property like almost 10 years ago. I worked on it for five years. And so it's definitely a lot of hard work that's gone into this. And so I can't wait to step into that building. I'm most excited about the community garden and the bay-friendly landscaping. I'm looking forward to having all of our staff under one roof to increase the efficiency and to serve our community even better. I think it's really cool that the new building is going to have a lot of green features, that it's going to be LEED certified, and it's going to have charging stations for electric vehicles. This is kind of the way of the future and I'm glad CV Sand is in front of it. I think it says a lot about the financial discipline of CV Sand that we're able to build the new building without raising rates on residents or taking on any new debt. As a CV Sand employee and resident of Castro Valley, I'm really excited for that corner to be upgraded. I'm excited about the new facility because it will improve the experience of all third graders that attend our four hours field trips. CV Sand is an important part of our community now and this building is going to be an important part of our community's future. For the most up-to-date project information, please visit cvsound.org forward slash projects. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, now we want to kick off the meeting and bring Evan on to, uh, to discuss the recap of the uh, December 15th meeting.
All right, thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks everyone for attending tonight's meeting. Um, the outline for tonight's meeting is to first recap the December 15th meeting. Uh, we'll then transition to talking about the current progress for the project, um, including with the project schedule and then opening up for any miscellaneous comments or any other questions about the project. So, uh, so, so the recap of the December 15th meeting was mainly to just present uh, the landscape architects recommended tree and hedge uh, for the north and south wall. Uh, right here, you can see that they are recommending the Carolina cherry hedge and the Loris uh, Nobilis Saratoga tree um, shown here on the north wall. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, both of these trees were chosen because of um, they use very little water. Uh, the Saratoga tree in particular is also low maintenance. It does not shed debris and it provides the necessary shading for the parking lot. And, and since that meeting, uh, we did receive a couple of questions or comments from the public. Uh, number one, the question is, you know, how large is the tree canopy when fully matured? Um, and number two is, will there be a problem with any root systems to the neighbors? So we sent both of those questions to the landscape architects and they provided the following answers. So first, you know, how large is the tree canopy? So the landscape architect said that the max tree canopy would be 20 foot in diameter and the max tree height would be 18 feet. Um, and this is only reached after many years. Uh, just given the location of, of the trees, um, it's, it's in a confined area, um, it's against the sound wall. So that kind of prevents it from, I guess, fully maturing uh, to what it can be like if it was in an open area. Uh, and then the second question is, will root systems be a problem to the neighbors? Um, their response was neither the Saratoga tree or the Carolina tree cherry have problematic root systems. Um, however, you know, root barriers can be specified for this um, if that would make the neighbors more comfortable. But the landscape architect um, doesn't see that, uh, doesn't deem that to be necessary, um, but it's open for discussion. So I think with, uh, before we go back to that, Mike, um, I think we should just, if there's any comments about these two um, questions or, or answers from the architect, I would kind of like it open up here. Um, and then we can talk about the project schedule later. So I live on the, me and Bao live on the 21171 Center Street house. So I got, question is how far, is the planet is going to be planted from the uh, wall, the ground to the wall. And so it, when you said, once it's fully matured, I don't know if, when I was saw, watching the video and I don't know if you guys, my roof from the wall, uh, from the roof to the wall, it's about five feet, about five feet in distance. So if it matures in a 20 feet diameter, that means there's going to be 10 foot plus that would cover up, cover my roof. So what will happen if it does, if you, if that does happen from your, your standpoint and most likely my answer is, well, I want my, my line exempt from any of these trees that will grow past or pass through the walls. Uh, to answer your first question, uh, the trees are gonna be planted about four to six feet away from the sound wall. Um, which would give about six to four feet on your side of the property. Um, given that it's 18 feet high, I don't think that it will touch the roof, but we can certainly ask that question just to double check on that. Um, and Roland, I don't know if you wanna take over the, the second part of that question of, I guess, exempt from the, I think by line, do you mean sewer line or are you talking no, about? No, I no, I think, I think both of the questions were related to the tree. Um, so I wanna to touch on what you just said, Evan. It's, so you said that the, 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 basically the canopy of the tree is 20 feet. That means that's the diameter of the canopy, right? So from the trunk, it would be basically 10 feet. So if the tree is planted five feet from the wall, and their, their roof is five feet 
from the property line, then that means that the tree could potentially grow to a point where it it would it could hang over the it could hang over the roof. I mean, I, mean, I don't I can't guarantee the tree is going to stop growing at at ten feet radius from the trunk. So I think you know I want I want to be just straight up with that. I mean, you know, we're we're talking about a tree uh that's that you know we as human beings don't have the ability to, to to control we're trying to pick trees that we think are proper and right uh for the site and also appreciating what the comments are from our neighbors um it's our understanding that uh, according to and correct me if i'm wrong landon or evan if a tree canopy does cross over into someone's property, they have the right to trim that tree on their side of the property. Um, unless, unless I misunderstand the question and if I understand, um, so I, I would stop there and make sure I'm interpreting the question correctly. Um, if that question was toward me, even though, yes, I, I think we do have the ability to cut the trees, but if it grows to 20 feet, Normal homeowners don't have a 20 feet ladder. So how am I gonna trim a tree that high if, I, if it gets to the point? And you said earlier, trees, it's unpredictable. It can grow five feet and can grow to 20, 30 feet, nobody knows. And if it gets over my roof, it's gonna cause more problems to me later on down towards time. Okay, so I think we'd have to take that back to the architect. Where is that? Do we have the site plan? Like, where is that tree going to be? Is this tree planted directly across from the, the house or is it? Um, uh, Mike, can you share that, uh, the presentation again? And then it's slide. Um, it's right after that recap slide. Yeah, Roland, if I could, I, I think that was one uh, maybe suggestion that I was thinking of was the, you know, the spacing of the trees could be done in a way where we maximize the distance away because, you know, you can see there uh, certain parts of the house kind of jet towards the property line. And um, so that's something I think pretty simple and easy that we can do to to do, um, you know, the spacing in a way to, to maximize the distance from from the roof line of the building. Uh, in, in the adjacent property, which is pretty much what, how the architect shows it here. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. We can see if we can, we can see how we might be able to place those trees in such a way where maybe they don't impact that roof line at that point. Um, we, you know, I think the other thing I would want to say is we do trim our trees even at this site periodically. We usually have a tree trimmer come out every few years to do some tree trimming, just because that's 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 good for the tree. Um, that's good for us aesthetically to keep the tree in some sort of shape where it doesn't. They they usually thin out the tan tangled branches and things like that. Um, so um, you know we try to keep our trees healthy. Uh, we try to keep them in the shape that they are intended to be. Um, uh, and I guess in this in this instance, we can try to see if we can move those trees away. Um, and, and lastly, you know, I would say that part of that, the, those trees do help enhance the barrier in terms of sound and also in terms of visual um, aesthetics um, uh, for the neighbors as well. I'm okay with you going to spawn some plants, but I prefer something that will not have an unpredictable way of growing that possibly past the wall or on towards towards the roof. So I don't know if you there's another option, a third type of tree that will not grow out of control in 10, 20 years. Can do you have a suggestion on that? You know, I I I, I would think that um I, I think that what we're suggesting is probably the the, the right suggestion to go back to the land ar landscape architect to to see if there's a way to not to just I because to answer your I think what I was stating was any tree that we plant 
those trees will grow according to the light they receive, the, the moisture they receive. And so I, I would never be able to make a guarantee that that tree canopy not, might not grow five feet over the, over the fence line. I just, I would not be able to stand here today and say that. But what I could do is if we could figure out and if that's acceptable from the, the landscape design and, and, and the County of Alameda's acceptance of our landscape design that as, as Landon had said earlier, there's a way to space those trees where they would not impact your roof because there just simply isn't a tree right there. That's probably the best bet uh, for a solution. Um, sorry, can I say something? Um, my name is Val. Um, also for my research, um, this country is uh, the highest can be after 15 years can be 25 and the wave can be 30 is not only 20 for my research. So I don't know you guys got the correct research, but before this meeting, I, I do some research. So that's why I'm very concerned about this point. Because if 30, only um, you can divide half half and that means 15 feet on my side. And then you say you got to pen it five feet on a way the same wall, that means at least 10 feet after 15 years. It's 10 feet on my property. So that means we cover my whole house. So that's why we're very concerned about that. Um, if I could address that or, or answer that, I think, you know, just to make sure it's clear, you know, the, the numbers and, and uh, data that, that Evan uh, displayed earlier and, and talked about earlier is, is information that uh, we receive from our landscape architect and, and the design team on this project. And, um, you know, you know, we're, we're trusting that they are professional and, and, and know the types of trees and the, and the information that they're providing us is accurate um, in terms of the future growth and, and, and expected height and canopy and things like that. And again, I'd just like to add on to that. You know, I think there's a difference between a tree that's growing in an open area versus a confined area. So uh, I believe that was factored in and that was part of the landscape architect's comments was, you know, these trees, they're, they're not in an op growing in an open area. It's confined by that sound wall. Um, which would limit um, uh, the growth rate and, and, and everything like that, um, and that the numbers were provided by the landscape architect. But so that's what I would also like to add on to. To, the, to that point, Evan, can you tell me how deep? Um, so we're talking about an eight-foot sound wall, correct? Yes. And, and the the footing will go far. How far below? the surface, because we talked about root, root systems a little bit, right? Yeah, um, I'm not sure the exact footing or like, so there's footing for the piers and then there's gonna be panels that are basically, you know, uh -huh. uh, inserted between the piers. So I'm not sure how far those panels go um, into, okay. into the ground, but I can find that out. So that means that, and then you, okay, so, I was thought I thought we were going to have a continuous footing. You're saying we're going to have piers and panels in between. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, okay. So that's that's one point. Um, and then you had talked about root barrier. Right. Right. So uh, also ask the arborist um, when you. It's my understanding when you do a root barrier, uh, tree trees are you kind of see like the you've seen like the city of Oakland. Uh, sign where they've got like the tree up above and then they show the roots down below. And I'm not an arborist by any stretch of the imagination, but it's my understanding, as you pointed out, Evan, that when you restrict the roots down below, that also restricts, restricts the canopy up above. And can we get a professional opinion from our arborist on that? Uh, because that does, that will have an indication of how wide that tree would get. Um, if we are going to restrict the, um, if we are going to restrict the root system, uh, and we can share that with the neighbors, and then they can also do some research on that, uh, because you're right. If a tree is sitting out in the middle of a field with unrestricted ability for their roots to grow, that tree could probably get pretty wide. 
if we do create a root barrier, then that tree might not be as wide. But again, I'm not, I'm not an arborist, and so I could not answer that question uh, specifically. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll, and, I'll reach and out to you. And I think that speaks to the neighbor's comments is uh, they want some assurances that this root, this tree is not going to be a 40 foot wide tree at some point. Um, and so how do we, how do we give them some confidence that that's what's going on? So a uh, couple more questions is on this picture, the, uh, are those 10 trees on the whole, is that what, south or north wall? Because if there's 10 trees, at least if they do get to the point that's 30 feet wide, that means there's going to be five of those trees going to be at least touching portion of my property. My over property on my property, and I notice in the front of the the current the current um, property, there's a it looks I'm guessing it looks like a Saratoga tree that's already on the property right now in front, and that thing is huge. I don't know if is that the same type of um, trees you're gonna be uh, gonna be planted there. I don't no, I don't think that that's not the type of tree that we're proposing. Uh, but I can find out what. That existing tree um, that's near that, you know, near our driveway. I can find out what that tree is. Thank you. Thank you. So it sounds like uh, the game plan for us is to come is to um, it's like two-step game plan, kind of look at going back to the arborist and landscape architect to see if they can space out the trees in any way and make sure that um, accounting for any future growth that it doesn't overhang on any roof lines. And then also to go back and ask, you know, how deep are the sound wall panels? How deep do they go into the ground along with uh, adding a root barrier and what type of, uh, how does that restrict uh, tree growth and tree canopy growth? So, um, is there anything else uh, from the property owners? Is there any other questions you want to ask the architect? Or does that sound like it's a good point, game plan moving forward? Um, yeah, uh, final information, but uh, I'm still gonna, if, it, if they can't, if they stated that it's gonna grow over to the point that I still wanna stick to, I prefer to be exempt on any trees that will grow like that. Sounds good. So I want to know how many tree on will on my side of the property. So on your plan. Because uh, my 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 fence is uh, 100 feet with your property. Okay, uh, yeah, we can provide that information too. So can I can I ask one last clarifying question? So is, because I want to make sure I understand the request. Are you, is the, I, I thought when we started the conversation, it was talking about trees overhanging roofs. But I don't think, if I'm understanding correctly, particularly with the, the discussion about the, or the comment about the, the length of the property line. So the request is, so at least I understand the request, the request is you would not want to have any trees overhanging the sound wall into your property at all? Yes. Okay. Please. Thank you. All right. Um, Mike, can you go ahead, go to that project schedule? So currently, Dolan is working on the construction documents. Uh, they expect to complete the 80% documents by late April uh, and submit those to the county for a review. Uh, we are estimating to award the contract by August or September of this year. Um, and the construction period, which is about a 12 month to 14 month uh, construction period, we expect that to start around September of this year and be complete by October of next year. Um, and with that, that was all that I had to present. Um, and we'll just open up for any final questions or miscellaneous questions.
Are there any other questions from the property owners? Bao, any other uh, questions or concerns? I have a, um, I still have one more question. <laughs> it's Absolutely. for right, yeah, it's for right now. Um, you know, you know why we very uh, worry about the tree? Because um, right now, Stevenson have a lot of tree outside, right? So looks like Stevenson never take care about that. Um, on the fall, you know, every week we need to work in on, our green can, every week is full, working on Stevenson's tree. Because you citizen have a lot big tree, the leaf drop down, nobody take care about it. And then they fly all around the neighborhood, include us, include my neighborhood. Every week, my our neighborhood is working on your tree for right now already. So that's why we are very worried about in the future. We might don't have enough green can for working on the citizen tree. So can citizen hire someone? to clean the uh, street on your driveway, and then they not every day fry away all the trees, the leaves to our neighborhood. Because we are so hot, every day we clean it, they come. We clean it, they come. Every day. I can I can send out a picture. <laughs> okay, now I, I, I've been up there hanging up the banner. I know that those, uh, those big trees up in the front do drop a lot of leaves in the fall. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, Roland, if we have, if uh, uh, our Jeff, our maintenance guy, does he uh, does he take care of the, the fallen leaves? Uh, so it sounds like this is a new issue that I haven't heard of as far as them blowing into uh, the neighbor's yards. So we do have, um, land, we do have um, a uh, gardener that comes by. Um, that's why that front area doesn't have big, tall weeds as it once did. Uh, um, we, we, we manage the site, uh, from the perspective of having someone come up there and do the regular kind of, you know, landscaping that you would do on, on any property that someone might have. This is a new, I wasn't, I'm not aware of what, what's being discussed. So do we have trees? Well, we'd have, I guess we just have to investigate at this point. This is a new concern um and i'm not even sure what where those trees are going to stay in the um in the um in the, in the final design but we certainly can take a look at um what this what this issue is that we're that's being discussed okay, let me, thank you. let me help you clear a little bit if you look at that picture that you guys have been showing, the first tree on the right, I think it's called, it's an oak tree. Oak leaf and leaves falls from autumn to winter, it falls. Once it falls, we have a, like a 25, 30 foot driveway. If a wind blows in it, all the leaves stacks on all inside, our, inside that driveway. It's it just pretty much, sticks to the sides sides of the walls and in a fence area and it goes straight into our property as well because of wait it, so i'm sorry are you saying that the, the leaves fall on our property but the wind blows them through the fence into your property not the fence it's that's what i said the first picture on the, on the, on the, on the picture it's just one house then then our driveway. Got so it. it's right next there. If the wind blows, it goes, the driveway is like a magnet for wind. So it just goes straight in. So that's why my wife was concerned about who's who's picking up. And I've been raking those leaves almost weekly for the last month or so, uh, just to every week only get one, one green bin. And I just fill up every by weekly. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll need to we'll need to investigate that. Uh, so yeah, thank you for bringing that to our attention. We'll have to go out there and look at it, uh, and we'll we'll talk to Jeff, who does our facilities maintenance. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at it. Uh, this is thank you for bringing this to our, to my attention. I don't know. It sounds like Mike may have some knowledge of it, but I haven't. I, I'm not aware. I, I wasn't aware that the uh, leaves were blowing into their yard. I just I've been up there. Um... You know, at the property, and I know that leaves do fall 
uh, mm -hmm. from, from those two big trees out front, but I, I was unaware that there's a uh, some type of driveway vacuum that's giving the neighbors, um, you know, a, a lot of work to do when it comes to uh, right. taking care of the leaves. So yeah, we'll definitely look into that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? once going twice i do want to thank uh, everyone for uh, taking the time and attending the meeting um as you guys know we're, we're really excited about this project and definitely excited to uh to work with you guys so to uh you know your feelings can match our excitement and we definitely want to be good neighbors so i do want to thank you guys for taking the time to attend tonight um and again if you have any questions maybe as soon as this meeting's over if five questions pop in your mind uh, you can email me michael at cvcn.org and uh and i'll get the word out to uh Roland, Landon, and Evan, and, uh, you know, we'll work to make sure that we uh, address any issues you guys may have. So I uh, just want to wish everyone a, uh, a good night. Thank you for attending the meeting. Uh, everyone stay uh, safe and healthy. And um, our next meeting is February 8th, and I'll be uh, sending out invites for that and uh, promoting that on Facebook as well. But we invite you to uh, join us again for our next update in February. So everyone have a fantastic evening, and we'll see you next month. Yeah, thank you, Mike, and thank you, uh, everybody, for participating on the call tonight. Thank you so much.